Hi there, welcome to another Quick Tips video. In today's video, we're going to discuss the difference between an insert effect and a send effect. Behind me, I've got a vocal track with about five different vocals going. On their own, without any effects, they sound quite naked and raw. So I'm going to use a compressor to control the sound so to make sure that they're not poking out above the other vocal tracks and the other tracks I have in my mix. And I'm also going to add a couple of send effects. And I'm going to add reverb and delay and a couple of other things to give these vocals a sense of space. Let's go and have a listen to what the vocals sound like on their own with no effects and no treatment. This is me singing and it kind of feels like a window cleaner has just appeared at my window without notice and I'm standing there completely stark as a nude. To get greater control over the volume on my vocal track, I'm going to add some dynamic processing as an insert on the channel. So I'm going to inserts and I'm going to search for a compressor. Now a compressor will mean that once the level gets to a certain amount, I can compress it and stop it from pushing over that level using the compressor settings. I could add a compressor as an insert effect over all of my vocal channels by highlighting them, clicking on quick link, and then adding a compressor. And now the changes that I make to one will affect all of them. In Cubase, we can send the signals from a number of individual tracks to group channels and also to effects channels. So this means we can affect a number of different tracks at once on an individual channel, which gives us greater control over the effect. So I'm setting up a group track here and I'm sending all of the signal from my individual vocal channels to the group track. Eventually, I want to be able to pan these vocals left and right and work with stereo delays. So I'm making sure the group track is a stereo track. Now we've got the group track over on the right hand side and it's selected. And I can go into the inserts again and add an individual insert over the group track. Or I can quickly right mouse click on the track and add an effects channel to the vocal group. Now we can add up to eight inserts over the top of our effects channel. I want to add a reverb because I want these vocals to be quite spacious. But the thing about certain reverbs is they can be quite memory intensive. So if I was to add a memory intensive reverb over every individual vocal track, it would very quickly start eating into the performance of my computer. The other advantage of adding a reverb as an insert on an effects channel is that whatever I do to these parameters is going to change the reverb sound on all of my vocals. So it really helps me get a uniform vocal sound very quickly. So it's saving us precious time in the mix process. Having a separate effects send for my reverb also means that I can change the EQ setting just on the reverb channel. In addition to being able to add channel strips over the top of our effects channels, we can also go and add other inserts. So at the moment, I'm adding a compressor, which is only going to compress the reverb signal. So I can get even greater control over that reverb. Now I can continue to build on my vocal sound by adding further effects send channels. The first six slots on the insert rack are pre-fader, meaning that if I move my fader on that individual channel, it's not going to affect the signal that I'm sending to something like a compressor. I would always put dynamic processing in those first six pre-slots. The last two slots are post-fader, meaning that the insert is being inserted after the actual fader. So anything I do to my fader will also affect the amount of send or level going to the insert effect. To summarize, insert effects will only affect the channel that they're inserted over the top of, whereas send or bus effects can affect whichever channels are sent to that individual bus channel. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. Catch you soon.